Okay, I'm gonna start it now um, from here. Okay, yesterday they announced um, a new a new advent a new adventure and or an expansion actually. And the, the, what they announced was uh, there will be from the first day of August there will be 130 new guards and there will be the grand tournament. And the grand tournament is something you can. Um, it's, it's like the same what happened with GVG when GVG came out. There is like a lot of uh, adv adventures going on and expansions. So it's going to be really excited. And what is the most, what, what I'm excited about is the 130 new cards that are coming out. And there is also a new keyword uh, what is announced and that is the Inspire. And the Inspire effect is when you are hero powering, there will go off an Inspire. And what we already saw from it, like... If you make your hero power, you will get one attack on a minion. Or if you hero power, you get a spell in your hand. Like the the, the inspire effect will all be is all written on the cards that are coming out. And the new expansion will be um, pre available also uh, for uh, if with real money, but you can also buy it with gold. So if you have already a lot of gold, that's also really nice. And but now I want to evaluate all the cards that they announced yet. And Let's just go card for card. The first card that they announced was the Caldera Drake. And you see already, uh, they are with this new expansion in the Grand Tournament, they want to do a lot with the hero powers. Besides the Inspire effect, you also have cards that say um, your, hero power, your hero power goes off twice, or your hero power is deals one more damage, or your hero power has double effect. So that is really interesting. That's what they really want to do. The real thing about the new thing is that it looks like Hearthstone gets a bit more skillful, in my opinion, because it gets more. Uh, di there are there are coming in more things, and it, I think a bit less RNG. So I really like this new expansion. The first card that is called Lara Drake. If you look at the card, it's a mage card, so it's only available for mage. You can use your hero power. Uh, any number of times so that means if you have this minion it's only when this minion is on the board so if it is killed it's uh, the uh, the it doesn't go off so when this hero uh, is on the board you can use it n any number of times what means you have a two mana hero power and you can just spam it as much as you can but it is for two here it is for two that it is for two mana so I'm not really sure like the the card is if you compare it to other six drops, what do we have? We have Sylvanas, we have Emperor, and they have like a um, way more powerful um, Battle Cry or Death Rattle on the board. I don't know if this like it is a dragon, so maybe it there are already some Dragon Mage kind of decks out, so it might fit in their deck. But like getting one damage off for two mana, or more even like how many times do you use your hero power to have a good use? Like it might stack well with if you can like get your hero power off for less mana, but it feels like more a uh, more snowball card. If you are already ahead, this card might be good, but otherwise, I don't think this card is that good. It might work, but it is an interesting card. It, we really have to know what which cards are coming out more if there is like a good use of it. But if you just look at a six six vanilla with this here with this. Yeah, more like a kind of battle cry. It, do it doesn't really feel that powerful. You really need to have more cards, but it feels like more a snowball card that is only good when you're ahead. If you're behind, it's nothing more than 6 mana, 6-6. Six, six. So I think this card is... If there are not coming out cards that stack really well with this, this card will not be played in competitive play. Let's go to the second card, a Poison's Blade. And this card is uh, a card for the Rogue. And... The card says your hero power gives this weapon plus one instead of replacing it. So if you're using your hero power uh, for two mana, instead of making a one two dagger, you get a two two three dagger. It looks really expensive for its cost, right? A four mana for a one three weapon. I don't see um, with the, yeah like if you compare it with let's say the assassin's blade, that is a three five weapon for one mana more. I don't see how this card can be good at all. 3-5, like, if you can get a 3-5, how can a 1-3 weapon, and you have to use 2 mana every time to make it a 2-3, a 3-3. Three, three. And if you just have, if you just use 1 mana more for an Assassin's Blade, you get already a 3-4 weapon. For 1 mana more, instead of using 2 mana every turn, 
Like to make it an Assassin's Blade you have to use like 4 mana to make it a 3-3 and an Assassin's Blade is for 5 mana and 3-4 so maybe they will have like ridiculous other cards that stack really well with using your hero powers but besides that I think this card is not good. I don't think this card is good at all. No, I don't see this card be powerful at all. Like, your dagger is already a 1-2. I don't see that really be powerful. Maybe if you can get cards like Upgrade or s for the Rogue class, it might be decent. But otherwise, this card looks pretty crappy. Uh, the Maiden of Lake. And this is a more interesting card. Like, a 4 mana 2-6. It's not powerful, but it has a lot of health. Like, 6 lives. If you compare the other 4 drops that are played now are... If you compare it like a Yeti, a Pilot Shredder, it has a lot of life, so it's not easy to kill. And your hero power costs one less, so it might be pretty powerful, but with the Justice Minion, the stats are really, really bad. It is actually a, a good card against aggressive decks, like com if you use it against Hunter, uh, as a Druid, for example. If, you if you're playing Druid, and you use the Maiden of Lake, and you get a 2-6 that trades with every minion, and... You can just hero power for one every turn. It might be decent. It looks like a pretty good anti-aggro card. And if you can use it with other cards that stack with your hero power too, it might work. So, compared to the stats, against aggro matchups, mid-range match matchups, it might be okay. I, I will not say this is a bad card. It might work. It's really, like, it's really hard to say because we only know 15 cards and... With only the with only reading this cards and not knowing what the other cards will be, it might work. So I'm not gonna say this card is really bad. Then we have the uh, Nexus Champion Serrat. It's a five mana four five, so it's like a Yeti for one more cost, but with an Inspire effect. And this this card might work. Like imagine if your hero power cost one less and. Mm. Yeah, and if you just make it, well, like the Inspire effect goes up if you use your hero power. And imagine if you have the Maiden of Lake on board, you play the this Nexus Champion and you get a hero power up for one. What well, is a pretty good turn six. It might be, like, it's also pretty RNG, right? At a random spell, like, how good is a random spell? It might be a really good spell, but it might be also a pretty crappy spell that no one sees. That you can, can compare with the spare part, so... It, I don't think this card is going to be played in competitive play much. It's really RNG heavy, like really heavy. There are too many spells. So I don't, and it is for the cost. It is again what I said already. It's the same story as the Coldara Drake. If you are ahead, this card might be really good because it snowballs hard. It snowballs really hard, but if you are behind, this cards look pretty crappy. So I don't think it is that good of a card. Okay, then we have the pirates. Ah, oh, with the charts. Well, we I pl like you saw me playing already uh, a pirate din some time ago, and it was not even that bad. And like it is the only pirate card they announced. Four six for seven mana with charts cost one less with friendly pirates. I think that pirate is not bad. I think this pirate, if they are coming out more pirates, like the pirates need more pirates, but. In, Ro in Rogue and Paladin, this card might be really good. It depends what pirates are coming out. Like, if it's going to be a as strong as mechs are, this card is going to be pretty insane. But it is really hard to say. There, there need to be more pirates coming out to make, it, uh, to make it viable. But I think this card has a lot of potential. If you can get it off, like, for 5 mana. If you look at a Spectral Knight or an Ezra Drake, what is 5 mana... And you get it off for four six with charge. It's really good. I think this card is one of the best cards that they announced yet. I really see this as a good card. Uh, they still need to be more pirates coming out, but I expect that there will be more pirates. So I think this card is going to be pretty strong. It, it is probably the best card out of the sixteen cards that are coming out. Then we have the uh, Thunderbluff uh, Valiant. It uh, it is a shaman card, and it says inspire, give your totems plus two attack. So it is more a uh, turn seven play where you play this card, you make a totem to get the inspire off, and your totems get plus two attack. I think this card is way too expensive. It still has decent stats with three six, but if you are behind, this card doesn't do anything. 
you get the plus two on totems and if you have like only one let's say compare it to the quad monster but the quad monster is more powerful because you get the you get the effect immediately off the with the thunder bluff you still need to make the totem and you get only plus two attack you don't you don't guess but you don't get plus two plus two on your minions so I think this card is like pretty bad it's way too expensive for a seven mana play you have to be ahead on the board if you are behind you will never play this card in the hand and you already get that sometimes with quantum master and that's why people only play one quantum master sometimes so if there if there are not if there is not like a muster of battle coming out for the shaman I think this card is really bad it's too situational it's too expensive and it's not even that good to get plus two attack the, the totems will still be pretty easy to kill so I don't think this card is that strong then we have the ball of spider and I don't know why why they made this card like serious six mana get through three web spinners like how bad can you make a card first thing it's the hunter class and the last thing the hunter is looking for is cards like this really expensive spells that don't deal damage at all and you get three shit spinners I think this card is so bad like maybe you can use it in, in for funny things of course it might be pretty useful for funny things make make cool make cool troll and videos with this card but like this card is so bad this card is so bad six mana get three web spinners like it's it's just terrible for six mana maybe they have some funny things coming up with web spinners or with cards like this but if you'll just look at the card like I don't even see why they made this card because it's not even close to be decent that maybe in a it might be a, fi a thing in a really heavy control hunter but, but then still this card is so bad yeah like compared to dark whispers it's for five mana you get five wisps this card is costing one more you get two less Okay, they have a death rattle, but who cares? Nah, this card is terrible. This card is just terrible. Uh, we have the Drone Totem Carver, and this is a more interesting card. The battle cry is gain plus one plus one for each friendly totem, and you can use it. You can uh, compare it a bit with the what is the card out? I mean, it's the Frostwald something, and that is a card that is also plus four plus four. And you get plus one for each card on the board so I'm not really sure why this one is more powerful than that one it's one mana less so that's a powerful thing if you look at the other four drops what are the co with where you should compare it with yeah like you should compare it with with a Yeti and with a Yeti is a 4-5 and if you just have already one totem it's still a 5-5 so I think this is one of the best card that is is announced this card might be pretty decent if you have one or two totems out it is a 5-5 five five. if there is no totem out it's still a 4-4 four four. not really powerful because 4 HP is pretty bad it's pretty good uh, annoying to kill but with one totem already it's already a 5-5 five five. and then it trades really well with 5 drops it trades with Belchers it trades with Ezra Drake so I think this is a pretty okay card it, it depends like they have to be like a bit more totems that are pretty nice but it might be a pretty good card then we have the Evigi and Evigi says when a friendly minion uh, dies summon a random minion with the same cost um, you can look at it like how the recon bobulator works because when when you can also make a random minion from it with the same cost when I saw this card, I was thinking of the Recombobulator, but it's a bit of an another. It works a bit different because it's a secret. So how good is this card? This card is for me. It's really hard to say how good this card is. If you compare it with duplicate, so like your opponent has to trigger it. Like it is pretty good, maybe with if in Molten Giant Mage when you have it on board. You get a sec uh, you get another molten giant on the board when they kill one. If you just compare that, let's say you have an you have an I think this this card is going to be used in more 
like a mid-range mage. Mid-range mage might be a thing with all the new cards that are coming out. Maybe mid-range mage is gonna be a thing. And if you have like a water elemental on the board, you get another four drop. What the best will be a yeti, but it might also be an it might also be like a two four keeper. What is pretty bad. It looks like a bit of a like it's the same as the recombobulator. It might be decent, but it's pretty RNG heavy. I don't think people in constructed play will like this card. Because at, at his best, it will be pretty nice. Pretty good. It's not gonna win you the game. The only thing where it might be work is in a, in a Molten Giants mage. That's the only thing I can really think of. Because you will get another giant. The only thing that costs 20 mana is a giant. So maybe that might be a thing. But besides that, I think it's too RNG heavy. And not that powerful for his RNG cost to getting played. Then we have the Velen Hero, and that is a card I, I'm really interested in. It is a 3-2 uh, stat, like, it's just a 2-mana 3-2. A lot of 2-mana uh, cards have this stat. And your hero power deals one more extra, and it is a mage card. So, if it is, if you use this as turn 4, you can use it as an, as an, just as a 2-drop and, de and deal with a 2-heal creature. It might work pretty well, it is... It is not a turn 2 drop, I think. And, like, if you look at the card, and if you look at um, the card that we saw earlier, the Maiden of Lake, it might work pretty well. Like, it's a pretty strong turn 6 combo, where you play the Maiden of Lake. Um, turn 7 combo, where you play the Felon Hero and you deal 2 damage. But it still looks like more a snowball card. If you can get it off on the board, they don't kill it, it works. If you don't get it off, it's a pretty crappy card, so... I don't think it is that strong yet. If there are coming more cards that stack well for the mage with their hero power, it might work really well. So I will not say yet that this card is crap or not being played. It might be pretty good if there are coming more cards. Uh, if there are coming out more cards that work well with your hero power, but if there won't, I think the card will not being played. It's too situational and it's it's like one damage pretty good for a turn, turn 4 play, it's not that good. And then we have the Frost Giant, and this is an interesting card. It says cost 1 less for each time for use your hero power this, this game, and the first thing I was thinking of was uh, how good is this card in Handlock? Because the Handlock is the deck that used the most hero power, it is the card that does the best with, um, with Giants, so I was like, how good is this in Handlock? And Let's say you still have to think like um, there will always be the decks that use their, their the aggressive deck. So if you use your hero power four or five times, what is pretty average in a game. If you use it four times, it's a six drop. It costs six mana, eight eight. So when do you play mountain giants and molten giants for six mana? Almost never. You always play them for four mana. So you have to tap six. So I'm pretty sure this card is worse than molten and mountain giants. If you compare it to the 5 and 6 drops like Belchers, Sylvanas, Emperor, I think it's a bit less powerful. But if they are coming out more things for the Warlock that stack with their hero power, it might be pretty decent. It, it's I think it is going to be an okay card. I, I really want to, I'm pretty sure a, a lot of people will try it out. If there is like... Just a slight leak thing coming up more for the hero power of the Warlock. Frost Giant will be played in the Warlock, in the Handlock decks. But now it's still kind of tricky because you have to get, you have to put Belchers, Low Taps, Zilvanas, and they are already a bit questionable cards in the deck. So I'm not sure if the if the Handlock needs it. I'm like the Molten Giants and the Mountain Giants will still be more powerful because you play them for five for. 3, 4 or 5 mana, you almost never play a giant for 6 mana. So, I don't know, it might work, but it's still really questionable. And then we have the Kodo Rider, and this is a pretty interesting card. I mean, summon a 3-5 War Kodo, so it is a turn 8 play. You summon this card, you hero power, and you get it off. What is interesting, if you don't kill this card, and... Uh, of your, if your opponent can't kill this card, there is coming another one. 
In, w in what deck is this card gonna be good? Like, it's a card you can use in every deck. Summon a 3-5. If you compare it to... And Sky Golem or the Karen Bloodhoff. It it sounds like what are a lot of these car like the, a lot of these inspire cards are a lot of snowball cards. If you get it off, and there's a lot they can't really deal with it, you win the game because the snowball effect is so big. But six mana, three five stats. It's like a turn eight play. Compare it to Ragnaros or compare it to these powerful eight drops that we have here. It is pretty weak. Like three five like. I have my 6 or 7 drop on the board, I have my Dr. Boom on your board, and you play this Coda Rider with your hero power. I just use a spell and I deal already with one. I don't know, it's... I'm really, I'm really not sure how uh, big of an effect will, the Inspire will have on the board. It might be a good card, but I would say it's not worth to play. It's so it's way too expensive for his cost, like three, five, or six mana. It is a turn eight play because you have to get the inspire effect off to make use of it. I think it's pretty bad for now on. For now on, because we only know fi sixteen cards, and there are gonna be more powerful inspire effects. I I assume so. It might work, but we have to see. And then we have the Lock and Load, and this is a pretty interesting card. Each time you cast a spell, this this turn add a random Hunter card. So it is not a card you play early in the game. It's more like how later in the game, how more powerful it gets. It gets, but how powerful is it? I think it's really good in the mid range Hunter, maybe, but it's still questionable. Uh, the Hunter doesn't really have bad cards at all. All the Hunter cards are pretty nice. If you look at it. There are not many Hunter cards that you say, yeah, if I draw this, it's terrible. There, are, Like, all the spells, Hunter, Smog, all the traps, um, the all the damage spells, like Arcane Shot, Quick Shot, Kill Command, Animal Companion, they are all pretty good, so I will not say that... And all the minions are pretty good, too, so... This might be a pretty good card in a mid-range Hunter. I don't think this card is good in any aggressive Hunter. It's this too situational, you get the minions, you don't even want these minions, so... It might be a pretty good card in Midrange Hunter. This is one of the cards that has the most potential. But it, it puts Hunter in an other spot. And that's pretty interesting. Uh, then we have the Lowly Squire. And I think this card is... It looks fun. Inspire effect. But so... It is... Like you can drop it at turn 1. You hero power turn 2. It gets a 2-2. Two, two. But if you compare it to the Undertaker now. There is a reason Undertaker is not being played anymore. Undertaker is way easier to stack than Inspire effects. With Undertaker, you can still go Undertaker and play two Death Rattles and it gets a 3-2. But because it doesn't stack the heal, it is really easy to kill. So I think this card is really bad. I think you, you, won't, you won't see it being played. The Inspire effect is two mana every turn. It's way too expensive. There is no reason this card is going to be good. It's like, at its best, it will be a 2-2 at turn 2, what is pretty bad, so... This card, you won't see it, I think. Then you have the, uh, the Tuscar Totem Mick, and this, this card is pretty interesting. And, well, actually, let's go to this card first, the Totem Golem, because... I Yeah, I will say afterwards why I want to go to this card first, but... The totem, uh, totem Golem, and if you look at the card, I love this card. Shaman, this is probably the best card that comes out of this, uh, ex that we know from the 16 cards. I mean, it gives really some love to Shaman. It is a 2 mana, 3, 4. If you, you can compare it to a spider tank. What is a 3 mana, 3, 4 also. So it is one less cost and it has one overload. But the overload effect is not as powerful uh, or is like the 1 mana less that it costs is way more powerful w with the overload than it would cost 1 more mana. So, if you, you can just coin this out at turn 1. You just say, hey, I coined this totem golem out turn 1 and there is a totem golem for 3 4 stats. I think this card is insane. I think this card is just, it's also a totem. And that is pretty interesting. I, I don't know how much synergy the shaman will get with their totems. But I think this card is insane. I might be wrong, but this card can never be bad, right? You coin this out and you have a 3 4. It trades with all the 2 drops, it even trades with most of the 3 drops. I think this card is really insane, so... 
I think you even will see two of these cards maybe in the Shaman decks. This is really a card that changes Shaman maybe, but maybe I'm a bit wrong, maybe, but I think only one overload. Like, it's a bit the same maybe with Fire Guide Destroyer. I thought that card was pretty powerful too, but you don't really see it that much, but like, it's the stats are so good. I don't know, I think it's pretty powerful. And let's now go back to the Tuskar Totemek. The card is not really powerful. Like, what cards can you, ge you, can you get? You can get a Flame Totem. You can get all the four totems that the shaman has themselves, so it's a three mana card with a hero power. But you can also get the totem and golem. What is insane! If you play this at turn three and you get this totem golem, I will say you just win against any any matchups almost already. At, at least the aggro and midrange matchups. So I really wonder how much things uh, shaman will get with their totems. But the cards that the shaman gets also with the dread uh, with this card. Like if you play it, uh, if you play the Tuskar Totemic at turn three, you get another totem, and you play this turn four, it will be a six six. So, I think totem, the the things that Shaman gets with their totem is really powerful. That is the only thing that I see is really powerful out of the sixteen cards yet. The things that Shaman can do with totems, and this card has really a lot of potential. Yes, you can get just a hero power from it, but that's not even that bad. Getting a three two with an just a random totem but you can also get a flame totem you can get a totem golem it might be pretty good i'm not really sure yet but as i really see potential with the totem cards that the shaman has so yeah that was the uh, that was the end of the flock of my, of the of of this one i really wanted to evaluate the first 16 cards that come out i'm really excited about it and i hope you like the thoughts i give on all the cards and i hope you have some thoughts too and I will also evaluate when there are coming out more cards and yeah I hope you like it.